Hi, I'm U.S. Chess Digital Editor John Hartman, and I am here with International Master and U.S. Uh, Olympiad and FIDE Online Cup Team Captain John Donaldson. Uh, and John has uh, been kind enough to take a few minutes of his day and talk to us about the ongoing FIDE uh, Online Cup. So, John, uh, thank you for doing this, and how are you doing today? Uh, well, today I'm doing very well. We won both our matches, so I'm in a particularly good mood. Yeah, so t we are currently, after four days of play and eight rounds, we are currently in second place, correct? Correct. And tomorrow is an important day because uh, for the fifth day, we have two more rounds to play. And, right. and uh, depending on how we do, we may get to the super final on Sunday. Yes, right now we're in second. We're one match point ahead of Europe. Uh, China is uh, four match points ahead of us. Uh, we play tomorrow with Europe head-to-head -head in the ninth round, and then in the last round, we play against China. Uh, so we, we're going to continue to need a good performance, but I'm, I'm confident our players are playing well. The particular lineup that won two matches today uh, also won uh, the other two matches they played earlier in the tournament, so that's been a pretty successful lineup to date. So yeah, let's talk about the lineups. So who is playing for Team USA right now? Uh, there are six players that are playing. Uh, uh, there's uh, uh, Hikaru Nakamura, Fabiano Caruana, Linear Dominguez, and Wesley So, and Irina Krush, and Anna Zatonsky. So each, uh, in each round, we have three players, uh, three uh, men and one woman playing, correct? Yes. Um, and so you're able to set the lineups uh, according, I guess, to availability or according to strategery, uh, maybe a little of both? Uh, yeah, I mean, everybody's available. I mean, <laughs> they're not running around too much these days. Uh, yeah. Available to play. Uh, unfortunately, I, I can't play all of them all the time, which I would dearly love. But uh, instead, what we try to do is in the first half of the tournament, sort of, you know, give everybody a chance to play and sort of see how things were going. And then as the tournament progresses, and depending on how the team's doing, we, we kind of get into more of a rotation, if you will. Uh, so you've got uh, Hikaru playing on first board, which I think maybe uh, surprised some people, but uh, what's the, the, the idea behind having him uh, take the top spot for this tournament? Well, the thing to keep in mind is that this is a rapid tournament. It is not related to classical time control. And so uh, one thought I had before the event was just to use the uh, uh, FIDE rapid rating list, you know, use up some sort of objective criteria. Uh, but it just happened that before this tournament, they also had the Magnus Invitational. And if you were looking for a tournament to give you some sort of uh, indication of what sort of shape players would be in for this particular event, uh, you couldn't ask for a better one. Because, uh, of course, the FIDE ra rapid rating list is for face-to-face -face online you know, play, not for online play. I'm not you know, aware of any official you know, feed a rapid list for online player, although it'll surely be there soon. <laughs> I was about to say, not yet. <laughs> yes. So, uh, you know, Hikaru played magnificently in the Magnus, as did Fabiano. So, uh, you know, Fabiano by rating was actually the third rated player on the team uh, uh, by the feed a rapid list. Actually, uh, uh, he's in the top 10 in the world, but Linear Dominguez was about number five or so. Uh, uh, so we went by the Magnus list first, and then uh, Linear and, and uh, uh, Wesley and uh, Arena and Anna went by that FIDE Rapid rating list. So how did this event come together? Um, I mean, you mentioned the Magnus Invitational, and that was certainly one of the, the first big movers in this brave new world of, of serious online play. Uh, but the, it seemed like the FIDE uh, online event came together pretty quickly. H how did that all work? You know, I'm not sure of all the specifics, but I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, Arkady uh, Dvorkovich uh, from Russia, who's the FIDE president, you know, he's very uh, energetic, very dynamic. I think that uh, he saw, you know, what was happening, that all these big FIDE events that are coming down the pipeline were going to be canceled, that, you know, there needed to be something. And, uh, I mean, this is, uh, uh, in, in some measure, uh, sort of a stopgap, you know, effort, but on the other, it, it, you know, it looks like these sort of events, even, you know, knock on wood, things get better in the near future, 
or you know I think there's these sort of events are going to be here you know they're going to they're going to stay the course and they're going to be held you know from here on out excellent um how uh, which of the games uh, stands out to you thus far from 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 our team or I guess from any of the uh, any of the participants well you know I usually concentrate primarily just on our team when when the match is going on uh, but the game that I guess you know is, is, is probably the real crowd pleaser so far is uh, Anand's win against uh, Nepomniachtchi. You know he won in 17 moves in the white side of a Grunfeld against a guy who plays the Grunfeld all the time. And it turned out it was uh, some prep dating back to one of the World Championship matches. I think you know the uh, one of the ones in Chennai, but maybe the first one where he might have played like you know it was with C takes D5 and. Uh, Bishop D2. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, uh, you know, it was a, a attractive little miniature. Excellent. Yeah, it, it's a fantastic game. Uh, we will put it in the uh, in the comments to the story when we put it up on US Chess. Um, so I, I guess we, we should definitely talk about the the, the elephant in the room. Uh, we, we just put our June issue to bed, uh, a June issue of Chess Life, where we, our cover story is about uh, chess in the age of uh, the coronavirus. And I'm wondering... Uh, how all of this is affecting you and, and where you're at right now? Well, you know, uh, it hasn't affected me all that much, I would say. I mean, certainly like everybody else in the world, I mean, it's it's not business as usual, but uh, uh, it allowed me to uh, concentrate on some projects that sort of I, I put, to, you know, that were just sort of off to the side for like a couple of years. So one of the things I did is... Uh, uh, well, I'd say about maybe five years ago, uh, James Tarjan was still living in the Bay Area. He was living in Santa Cruz, and he was playing at the Mechanics. And uh, he mentioned, like, you know, he had all of his game scores. And I said, gosh, you know, so many of your games are missing from uh, uh, chess base. Uh, it's really a shame. And he said, well, you know, I saved them all. So he, one day he brought this big uh, uh, bucket full of game scores. And uh, I drafted... Uh, 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 Daniel Naroditsky, who was a high school senior, as a history project for him, and Elliot Winslow, who was working for the mechanics, and they entered a whole bunch of games. They got about halfway through the uh, score sheets that weren't in any database. And so uh, about two weeks ago, I finished a month's work of like entering about 500 games of gyms into, uh, into chess space. Wow, that, that's a lot of work. It is, but it was it was good fun, and and it was a, it was a, a, a trip down memory lane. Jim was very generous in uh, sharing his experiences and uh, uh, and, and also deciphering some of the score sheets. And uh, but no, his handwriting was actually quite good. Uh, so that was a lot of fun, and I thought that was some, a worthwhile thing to do. Uh, and I'm also finishing uh, the first volume of a, a print book on Bobby Fisher. Uh, so the timing's been good for that, and uh, uh, I've had a couple other uh, little uh, chess projects that I'm working on, but what I'm really kind of excited about is in maybe about two months, I'll have caught up with all these projects that were, you know, kind of like always with me when I go to sleep at night. I be thinking, why haven't I done these things, you know, uh, and then I just wanted to like just study chess myself, and, and then you know, hopefully uh, that will coincide with uh, chess, you know, face-to-face you know, -face tournaments maybe in the fall we'll be back, knock on wood, and, and then I'll start playing again. Excellent. Well, I think we're, we're all looking forward to seeing you back at the board. And uh, I, I know you've been trying to get back to, to active play, so this will be uh, very exciting for those of us who have followed your, your career for many years, ever since I should show this. This is sitting on my desk right now. Uh, back in the days of Inside Chess, um, all the work you did there. So, uh, and of course, all your literary output. I should ask you before I let you go, speaking of books, um, have you read anything recently that you really liked? Uh, gosh, you know, I've, I've sort of made it a, a point not to read too much right lately because I've just been trying to get these, these projects done. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I would say this, uh, I just uh, received a whole bunch of uh, books as a judge with uh, Arthur Yusupov and uh, Nigel Short for the uh, uh, FIDE has this uh, Book of the Year Award competition. So I am looking forward to doing some uh, reading in the near future. Um, you know, it's kind of funny because I would say that, you know, maybe like five years ago or 10 years ago, people were predicting that, you know, 
uh, there'd be no place for print books anymore, that you know, everything's gone electronic. And yet I make a strong argument that Oh, I'd say the vast majority of really outstanding books have been published like in the last decade. And, uh, you know, it's partly because uh, uh, there's a bigger pool of maybe top quality authors and also the fact that there are these tools that sort of free you to concentrate on actually thinking about what you want to write and, and, and writing it as opposed to having to gather the material. You know, I mean, with, you know, chess base and you know, various things of that sort. It's a, it's a lot easier to do than it once was. Absolutely, yeah, it, it really does feel like a golden age of chess books. And um, yeah, and you'll, you'll hopefully be adding to that soon with this Bobby Fischer volume and, and uh, who knows, maybe a Jim Tarjan book. No, no, no pressure though. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jim could write his own book. He's a great author and uh, I don't know, uh, you know, a lot of people just know his career sort of, you know, since, uh, you know, he came back, you know, which was I think in 20, 14 or 2015 in Florida, he played in the U.S. Open there. And, and since then, you know, has, has had, you know, a, a lot of great results. I mean, everybody knows Isle of Man where he beat Kramnik and he had a FIDE performance of like 2650 or so. Uh, but he's beaten several other top flight grandmasters, uh, you know, in his second life as a chess player, if you will. But before that, uh, from uh, 1965-ish to... Uh, 1964, maybe to uh, 1984, uh, that was his first life as a chess player. And during that time, he uh, played on uh, a number of Olympiad teams and uh, U.S. student teams. And his winning percentage on those Olympiad teams, I think the only players that are higher amongst U.S. players are uh, Isaac Ashton definitely is higher. And Sam Shanklin's right around the same are, you know, like around 75, 76%. Wow. Jim has a, you know, a, a full box, if you will, of U.S. team medals and, and several individual gold medals playing for Olympiad teams. And uh, he was actually the highest rated player in the U.S. CF on one or two rating supplements. And he was in the top 30, 35 in the U.S. at his very peak. Mm. You know, great. He's had two great careers. Indeed. Yeah. Immensely strong uh, right now. Um, yeah. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll all be playing again soon and we'll be able to see him uh, at the board and, well, and the rest of us as well. Um, at any rate, uh, John, I won't take him, uh, up any more of your time. So thank you so much. And uh, we will all be watching tomorrow when Team USA uh, tries to continue its, its good work and we'll try to make it to the Super Final on Sunday. Well, thank you. I, I'm, you know, the players are playing great and uh, they're really, really uh, giving it their best. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going to do well. All right. Thanks, John. Thank you. <laughs> she had to come back in. <laughs>